ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation. Hey everybody, welcome back to Civil War Battles from Things You Should Know. Today we're going to talk about Big Bethel, Virginia. In mid-1861, the Union forces controlled Fort Monroe, a federal fort located on the tip of the Virginia Peninsula between the James and York Rivers. This allowed Union forces to occupy Hampton and Newport News. In order to block Union troops, the Confederate forces dug a mile-long set of entrenchments north of Marsh Creek, outside the town of Big Bethel. 1,200 Confederate troops, commanded by Colonel Daniel Hill and Colonel John B. Magruder. On June 10th, Union Brigadier General Ebenezer Pierce led two infantry units, the 5th New York Volunteer Infantry from Camp Hamilton at Hampton and Colonel Frederick Townsend's 3rd New York Volunteer Infantry Regiment, which also had two in artillery howitzers, was to march from Newport News. The soldiers would organize at Big Bethel Road, south of Little Bethel, and conduct a surprise attack on the Confederate defenses at Big Bethel. The column from Camp Hamilton was to start at midnight, and that from Newport News just a little bit later as its line of march would be shorter. Anticipating possible confusion during a night march by inexperienced troops, Butler ordered the watchword Boston to be given to each column and further ordered that all troops should wear a white rag or handkerchief on their left arms so they would recognize each other. Any attacking regiment was supposed to first shout the watchword. Butler's aide and messenger to the Newport News Command, Captain Haggerty, forgot to advise Colonel Phelps and the Newport News contingent of these precautions. Yes, we can see where this is going, guys. The troops were coming up the narrow road from the direction of Hampton to the south. The 3rd New York Infantry was being led down the road by General Pierce and his staff on horseback without any advance guard. Bendix knew that no cavalry was with the Union force and mistook the 3rd New York for a cavalry regiment. More importantly, the 3rd New York Infantry wore gray uniforms with white bands on their hands, such as been previously seen on hats and other coats of other Confederate soldiers. So Bendix, who had not been given a watchword or instructions on armbands, thought the Confederates were behind his regiment as well as in front. He ordered his men to fire upon Townsend's men. By the time General Pierce was able to stabilize the situation, he had lost any possibility of surprising the Confederate troops. General Pierce also discovered that the 3rd New York Volunteer Infantry Regiment had suffered 21 casualties, two of them were mortally wounded. In addition, dozens of other men from the 3rd New York ran from the field. During this time, General Pierce had his artillery positioned opposite the Confederate troops covering the bridge. He sent U.S. Major Theodore Winthrop downstream with a contingent of troops to secure the passage across the stream. During the course of the battle, Winthrop placed his troops piecemeal with no real overall strategy in his assault. The lack of experience on the Union side gave the Confederates an advantage. From behind their earthworks, they fired continuously and eventually beat back the U.S. troops. During this fight, Major Winthrop had jumped onto a log and yelled, Come on, boys! One charge and the day is ours. At this moment, he sustained a bullet through his heart while his men fled back across the creek. After the battle, Colonel Hill praised Winthrop's courage while disparaging the efforts of the rest of the Union soldiers. Later that same day, the Confederates abandoned their positions for a more secure defense in the town of Yorkton. The military effects of the battle were minor, but it was heavily reported in the newspapers contributing to the martial mood of the North. Major Winthrop and several other Union dead were buried on the field by the Confederates. Soon thereafter, Colonel Magruder granted a request by Winthrop's brother and Union officers under a flag of truce to recover Winthrop's body. They returned a body on the field with respectful escort. The estimated casualties for this battle? 76 Union casualties, only 8 Confederate. Well, thank you very much. That was the Battle of Big Bethel. We'll see you next week for the Battle of Rich Mountain. The world will very little note or long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here.